Uh, thank you for joining me, Fortino. Uh, thank you for having uh, me. Yeah, I, I, I'm really looking forward to to seeing your your insight on on the, your your entrepreneurship uh, sp entrepreneurial spirit and mm -hmm. how you've been how you've been uh, helping your community. I know that you have 26 years of experience in uh, sales and in, in marketing internationally, mm -hmm. nationally. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, that you're uh, you're uh, for the past 15 years you've been the the CEO of Staffing Solutions, 18 which years. is uh, 15 years, 18 yeah, years. Yeah. Oh, 18 years. Oh, yes. <laughs> ah, so, you know, and that's uh, in Montebello and Santa Ana. Correct. So there's two two locations, and that you uh, you've been a uh, uh, like a Hispanic small business owner, I know that you you uh, you've been on television, on Univision, Fox Eleven News, mm -hmm. commercials, radio, cable mm -hmm. programs. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, I saw that that you you really uh, love your Santa Ana roots, family mm -hmm. man at heart, and mm -hmm. uh, you love your community. That's correct. That's correct. Did you want me to start and just kind of elaborate on, or did you want to ask me a particular question? Uh, well, um, yeah, well, like, uh, the main thing would be like, how, how, uh, like, what's your, your background, your, your family, uh, like mm -hmm. how, how you're, you came like, like your, yeah. Like what, what values, uh, you, you, you had as, as you were growing up. Sure. Well, I come from a family of seven, five brothers and two sisters, and obviously my mom and dad. Uh, we lived in a small home in Santa Ana, probably 1,200 square feet at max. Uh, I tell people this story that I slept on the living room floor till I was about eight or nine because within six months, two of my oldest brothers got married, and they freed up a bed for my brother and I who used would sleep on the living room because obviously with nine people in a three bedroom home, <laughs> that's how we did it. But uh, <laughs> you know what? I, I loved it. I still love uh, sleeping on the floor, but it's, uh, you know, when you're a kid and, and you're growing up, you don't know that that's not normal. You, you kind of just go with mm -hmm. the flow, but it's, it's a beautiful thing to look back and see because, you know, when you grow as an individual and your, your business grows and you do better, you you obviously attain the nicer things in life and i can honestly say that i've been blessed and i'm enjoying those blessings and um but i'm i'm, I'm a family man i have uh, three children uh they're all adults now and they all have children and uh, i have six grandkids and um oh, six and as you were saying uh i've been doing international sales for many many years uh 18 not about 20 years ago I, I got into another industry which was staffing and then uh within two years i formed a partnership with someone and we started our business but i want to back up because it kind of it's kind of interesting how i got into helping people find jobs uh yeah. obviously my wife and i we had our family young so we were looking for work and so we we didn't have anyone to go to we didn't have money to to hire someone to help us do like a resume or do research and find out how to how to get a job. So we kind of learned ourselves. We bought a book or two and kind of learned from there. And mm. and after a while, you know, we got ourselves some decent jobs. And then friends of ours asked us. And then all of a sudden, you know, for years and years and years, we were helping people fill out applications for the county, for the city, uh, creating a resume for them. Obviously, we didn't charge them because they were friends and family, but uh, I think mm, I enjoyed. <laughs> yeah, mm, yeah. I, I think I enjoyed the part of helping them, and and that gave me satisfaction. And I think that's why I mm. didn't mind doing it. And uh, and then you know just just the way things progressed, um, I moved up in my career and started doing different types of jobs. Uh, there was one time I worked for Goodwill Industries and I helped people with disabilities find jobs. And oh, uh, that's so, awesome. Oh, I've <laughs> always thought that that's the way to do it, to, yeah. like, to make them get on their feet. Absolutely. And you know what? Um, so basically what I learned doing at home with my wife and I helping people, uh, I was now doing for people 
at Goodwill. So I would sit with a group of people, uh, explain to them uh, the process of looking for a job, uh, and then teach them how to interview, how to prepare a resume. And then my job was to go out and talk to business owners and ask them if they had an opening that they would be willing to hire someone with a disability, whether someone in a wheelchair, someone who might not have, uh, let's say, a withered hand or, or, you know, just something, but they can still talk, they can still type and, and do things. And to make a long story short, um, I got really good at it. Uh, people saw the passion behind me and, and it was really me wanting to help someone. And then they would see that and then obviously give us an opportunity. And then it started working. Uh, but right around that time, I started, uh, I got uh, a call from a company who wanted to hire me for an international position, which is what I always wanted to do. And so I left Goodwill and started working in, in de developing a business uh, for our company in Latin America. So I traveled to Central America, South America, the Caribbean, and I did that every month. I would come back home, be home for, you know, three, four weeks, then head back out for a week or two and then come back home for three or four weeks and then head back out for a week or two. So it was, uh, it was a lot of learning, a lot of traveling. I enjoyed it. I met a lot of great people. Um, I always tell people it's nice to travel and eat at the finer restaurants when someone else is paying for it. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, you, you develop a, a broader understanding of people. You get a, a better understanding that we're all the same. Uh, everyone wants the best for their family and for their kids. Uh, we're no different anywhere we go. And, um, so it was very interesting. And, um, so long, long story short, a friend of mine, uh, started a staffing firm and he, um, uh, remembered I did job developing for Goodwill and he says I think you'd be good and so I went to work for him I wanted to change I didn't want I was after a while a lot of traveling can wear on you especially if you have three young kids you want to be yeah, home and near hard. them and so but at the same time I, I was really good at it I've always done sales and marketing I think I brought in over five million dollars of new business for him within one year oh. and um that's good. <laughs> it is good. Uh, and then to make a long story short, you know, uh, things don't always go as planned when you work with people you think you know. And uh, unfortunately, my friend was not a good manager. He um, he kind of belittled people. He he kind of made people not feel comfortable who worked for him. People would quit. And um, with me as a salesman and as a, a person who would bring in accounts, uh, we would assign a recruiter for that company. So it takes a little while for a recruiter to get used to that client because they have a particular culture. They're looking for a t particular type of person and, mm -hmm. and you want, you want them to understand it and the mesh to be there. And it seemed like every time mm -hmm. someone would get familiar and used to the position, uh, they would quit because the way he treated the people or, so I didn't last very long there. I, I, I laughed, so but would... He would treat the person he would recommend badly. No, no, no. That like like the recruiters. So the recruiters work for him, oh. mm -hmm. and and they fill the orders. So so they work with the client. They find out what mm -hmm. the client needs, and then and then they find out what type of person usually works well there. And so those individuals who work for him, the recruiters, uh, would eventually quit or or he would fire them. But uh, my... they never ended up helping anyone. Well, they did, but what happened was the client would call me and say, "Hey, you know, we're not, we have a new recruiter. You know, the one we had oh. is no longer there." And, and then it switched again and switched again, and I, I couldn't stay because in my reputation and my name would be uh, so. I, I, I left, and um, I didn't immediately start my business. I went to work for a company in, in Chicago, and I was their representative in California, in Southern California. Mm. But I remember the young lady I met and we kept in contact and uh, she had strengths that I didn't have. So I was a sales and marketing guy. She did um, branch management. So she managed the recruiter. She knew how to. So we ha we developed a friendship and it takes money to start a business. Uh, we both invested a hundred thousand each because in staffing, people don't realize this. You're fronting money you're, you're like a bank so if you give a company 30 days 
uh, let's say you start five people there in a given week, uh, mm -hmm. the following week, you got to pay those people and then you invoice yeah. the client. But if you gave the client net 30, they're not going to pay you for 30 more days. But by that time, there's already been four more weeks that have gone by. So you front it another week, another week, another week. Oh. And then you're not getting paid until almost five weeks later on that first week. So you're like a little bank and, and, and you got to manage your money correctly. And if you don't, a lot of businesses go out of business because they don't know how to forecast and save money and have that money aside. Because if not, you, you're going to go broke and you're not going to have the cash flow for the payroll. Mm. But that's kind of how I fell into staffing and how I started working in staffing. And it's been a real rewarding life to me. And I, I enjoy it. Uh, we get people coming back who we've placed in positions. And they're so appreciative because they get into a job or a career that they always wanted to get into. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to get in. And sometimes you have to come in as a as a temporary worker who's working 40 hours a week and then eventually they see the quality of person that person is and then eventually oh, they hire yeah. them and then we're no longer involved but uh you know they come back like they bring us food and they you know just come back oh. and thank us it's really cool oh. Oh. and that, that's like a temp temp position temp it's, it's a temp they call it a temp but you're working 40 hours mm -hmm. and then when you get hired you get on permanently and and but temporary just means uh, you might only be there a few months, but you could be working 40 hours a week. Uh, okay, so kind of like a proba probation, um, an official probation kind of thing. Yes, and it's our contract, and they pay us a little each week, the clients. So it's kind of like they're fulfilling our contract by keeping them on so many months through us so we can make some money because we found them. You know, It cost a lot of money to find good candidates you have to post you have to interview you have to have staff uh take the time to read all the resumes because when you put a posting you'd be surprised a lot of people apply that have almost no experience or very little experience they just hope that you're going to call them but it takes an individual to sit down and read at least part of it to see hey this person is not qualified or is qualified and you have various stacks on your desk and you start separating and then you you uh, obviously you you want to narrow it down to like the 10 best you do phone interviews you bring them in and then you forward that individual to the client so that the client is finding someone they really like think of it this way if if i don't deliver to you someone that's uh, meeting the criteria of the position that you're looking for you're going to say hey he doesn't know what he's doing i mean this person doesn't have the experience in this area or or they don't even know how to do this and they're going to they're not going to pick me next time when they need to fill a position they're going to select another agency so i'm almost forced to do like uh, to deliver like a, a, a like between a scale of 1 to 10 i got to give them like a 7 or higher or i may never get called back so i have mm -hmm. to do my work and send them someone i feel could do the job and do it somewhat well so they're really confident in the person Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, Not every good. agency works that way, by the way. Uh, we do have standards because I don't want all a lot of business. I want good clients that take care of my workers and pay us on time because we are a business. We have to stay afloat. But uh, I think a lot of times when companies grow too fast, uh, they start sending people out that maybe don't meet criteria and then the client doesn't like them and then eventually lets them go and then you're not billing Staffing and then you look, agency, it looks bad yeah yeah exactly so um i'd rather not bite off more that i can't chew it you know i i want to be able to deliver on the people that i do have yeah and actually i was looking at uh articles that uh nowadays with with uh artificial intelligence that's mm -hmm. that's become really really big mm -hmm. um you can actually leverage it to scan uh, resumes uh, yep. really quickly now mm -hmm. and they can tell you like uh, yeah this one is good or that one not, mm -hmm. not so much mm -hmm. um yeah that would that be yeah that's uh that's, that's what I'm, i don't know uh i don't have something to, to look into <laughs> yeah no the ai i think will help uh narrow the pool down you still have to speak to the person and you still mm -hmm. got to learn because it you still need a human element to it 
I believe AI, there's a place for it in our industry, like in most industries, but the human uh, element has to be there as well, because if there's a certain culture in your client's business, the only way you're going to find out is if you communicate with that person, ask specific questions and kind of get a feel for who he is and how he operates or she operates. And, uh, and then you move that person along in the, uh, potential hiring process. Mm -hmm. mm, I see. Yeah. 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 That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause maybe they have everything correctly, but they're not, they're not mm -hmm. like a people person. Correct. They don't work well with others. Correct. Correct. Yeah, right. that's true. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And like, um, what's it called? Um, like for, for someone that's, that's trying to, to start something from, from zero, like, like you did, like what, mm -hmm. what's something that, that you say would, uh, it, it would be like really valuable lessons that, that like you wish someone had told you when, when you first started. Yeah. You know, um, I think your friends and your family are good people to ask with respect as to your talents and what you're good at. Uh, you, you know, I, I can, I, I know I have friends and you can say, okay, that guy speaks well, or this guy is good with organizing, or this person knows how to, uh, you know, analyze things really well. So you can almost, uh, get a lot of help from the people who know you best because i think in our minds sometimes we think we have an idea of what we think we want to be but there's natural abilities and talents that we all have that sometimes you don't see it as you you can't see it but other people can see it and i i always tell people too um when you have a resume the resume should really uh speak as to who you are and and a lot of times if you write a resume and you hand it to a friend or a family member or someone who knows you well or has worked with you, a coworker, they'll tell you, yeah, yeah that's you or, or no, you're, you're, that's not you. you. That's part of you, but you, you're missing this and this and this. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of times uh, that information is key in, in, in what you do and how you do in the future. I also believe assessments are very important. Uh, we do assessments in some particular positions but I think if you're like a college kid or a, or a high school kid graduating, there's online assessments and they're really good. They might cost you a little bit of money, but it will narrow a group or, or of, of, of types of jobs that your skill set, your, 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 what you like, what you enjoy. Because if you're going to do that job for 30 years, you might as well do a job that you enjoy and are going to get fulfillment from. And so why not do something that, that excites you? And, 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 and when you get up, it, it doesn't feel like work. It feels like something you enjoy doing. And then life is more pleasant. So that would be a recommendation I would have for someone young. Ask people around you, what do they see you, uh, your strengths? And where do they think they, that you could do or what you could apply your skills set in the future? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially because I've been on both ends where I've been working for companies and, and then uh, I started my, my business, Emerald Sky. Uh, yeah, like if if you don't love what you do, you <laughs> you you just don't don't enjoy anything of it at all. You, you would... just kind of go to your job and and I can you can even from someone that doesn't like their job, you can feel their first. Oh, you know, it. yeah, yeah, you know it. I wanted to make another point. So I didn't start my business till I was like 39, 40. So I, mm -hmm. I guess I want to let people know that, it, you know, if you when you start off, you know, I, I, I came from a lower middle class. We didn't have a ton of money. And um, I always knew I wanted to own my own business. I didn't know what it was going to be. I had mm. really no concept, but I had to go work for people. But but the beautiful thing about working for people is they're paying you to do a job, and usually they train you to do a job. So mm. so kind of kind of you, you got you got to get your your mind to think a different way. Okay, I'm working for someone, but they're they're training me for free because they're paying me. Yeah. Where I would have to go if I were to go learn it myself, I would have to pay for that myself. 
So, mm. you know, just take a different attitude. You know, I'm going to go here. I'm going to learn as much as I can on their dime. And in a year or two or three, if it's not what I want, you know, I didn't lose uh, anything because I gained knowledge and now know about this industry or this field. And then I would, you know, and I've, and I've worked for some good companies and I've worked for some bad. And I think that that mm. opens your eyes because when you do open a company, I will say that it benefited me because then I knew the things I didn't want to do. I knew, I knew what made a worker not feel good and not, mm. not appreciate the client or the company. And I knew the things that the, cl the workers did like and what, what they appreciate in the business. So it mm. sometimes those experiences at the moment don't feel like they're paying off or they're worth it. But as you move along in life and, and if you do start your own business, they do come in handy. Mm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like you say, you, even negative situations at the moment, mm -hmm. they, they help in, in the future. And it's never too late. Like I said, I, I started my business around 40. So, you know, I read a story about Kentucky Fried Chicken. He didn't open his first mm -hmm. restaurant till he was 65. And that's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> An entrepreneur. But there goes to show you. See, it's never too late. Mm, yeah yeah and um what's it called yeah because because i i've been yeah i remember i i had a I, I worked for for a company and my my manager was he his temper was uh oh, yeah exactly from the morning just mm -hmm. you could sense the tension and mm -hmm. and uh and like you said at first i i i was like man this is not never never gonna end or change and uh it feels terrible but but i remember well now i see it i it helped me to to become much more serious and mm -hmm. organized uh even though i still need more organization and but uh <laughs> and like how how to treat others sure you know because i absolutely how not to do it <laughs> absolutely yeah but uh yeah yeah we still hope the best for that guy <laughs> um yeah he, he was a good teacher anyway yeah yeah and, and um what's it called and, and like uh are there are there any any type of things that like you you feel helped you a lot to motivate you uh to keep pushing forward yeah i you know i i started my family young i, I was in my 20s you know i already had all three of my kids and I, and I obviously wanted to offer them good things in life. And, I, and, and, you know, every person has a different motivation factor. I'm a family man. I, I like doing things with my family, with my, with my, when my dad was alive, you know, I like traveling with him, uh, including him with our family. So, you know, I, I think, you know, when you have a motivation, it, 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 it helps you do things in life. And, and, and do things that maybe you wouldn't do, you know, and, and try things you wouldn't try. Um, you know, I, I just, I would encourage people just to, uh, you know, try different things and, and, and don't stay somewhere too long. And if you're not liking what, what, what you're learning or what you're doing it today, it's a good opportunity to try different careers. There's a lot of companies that are willing to train because there's a lot of baby boomers exiting the job market. Uh, because I'm in the staffing industry, I know a lot about what's happening with the demographics. Uh, the baby boomers are retiring at 10,000 a day. I, I tell people that and they 10, get, get amazed, but yeah, it's a, it's a, that's a big number. And uh, there's going to be a lot of openings. And uh, right now, because of the inflation, companies are reducing their their workforce but that's not always going to be the case uh they're reacting to the economy to everything going up in pricing and things like that but once that all gets fixed and adjusted uh the job market's going to be hot again and there's going to be a need for a lot of good workers out there mm -hmm. wow yeah, yeah that's yeah. yeah they're definitely going to need to fill that that position mm -hmm. for sure Just, i, I will add another thing too um, a lot of, a lot of high schools are pushing kids into college 
and there's not enough college jobs. You have this many college graduates, but this many college jobs. But if you go one tier down, you got all these trades uh, jobs mm-hmm. that are a huge amount of trade jobs available, but only this many candidates. And those jobs oh. pay well, and they, mm-hmm. you know, their careers, and and you can make a lot of money. And uh, I think we're pushing too many people to college. I think people, not everyone's made for college. I think there's a lot of trades that people can learn and have a good life, a very respectable life. And, uh, but for some reason, um, you know, we, we've lost that. Let's look down upon. Yeah, we need good yeah. plumbers. We need good electricians, welders. I mean, you name it. There's, there's a lot of uh, uh, great jobs out there, but people got to be willing to do them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was looking at, I don't know why it came up on my feed on, on Facebook of a, uh, of an expert uh, construction excavator mm-hmm. that has that that big arm, and, mm-hmm. and he was like putting dirt and placing it as if it was his own hand, just like like really, really neatly. Yeah. And, and yeah, everybody was like, "Ah, oh, he, he's he's amazing." And, and I saw the comments that that they they can earn up to thirty, maybe sixty five an hour, like mm-hmm. like uh, like that's that's really really good. Yeah, it's good. And especially if you like being outdoors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some people don't want to be in an office. They want to be outside. And, uh, you know, there's, you know, when there's a will, there's a way. And I think people just have to be more committed to what they want to do. You know, not settle. A lot of people settle. A lot of people are not willing mm-hmm. to try. And and I think that's why they, they end up in those uh, jobs. You know, they're respectable jobs, but but they're probably not getting the satisfaction out of life and, and the position because they settled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like uh, what, what would you say to, to those, those, uh, those people like that? Uh, how, how can I put it? Like they, they know that they can do something They they even have a skill that they know they're really good at, mm-hmm. but they just kind of go like, uh, when you tell them like, oh, you, you could do something great with that. And they say, oh, yeah, yeah. I've been thinking about it for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. And, and they, they don't do it. Like, what, what would you say to, to them? I, I would tell them, don't leave your job. Mm-hmm. Start doing it in the evenings or on the weekends for two hours at a time and see if something mm-hmm. develops. See if, see if what you think you're good at gets traction. Let's say you do it for one person and they say, hey, you did a good job. Uh, my friend's looking for someone to do the same thing. And and then if, if you can start getting traction and, and whatever it is that you think you might be good at it, don't leave your day job. Keep doing, just do this on the side. And then if if you start getting some traction and, and, and you start developing a clientele, then you know that you have some skills and, and abilities that people will pay for. I think everyone can do something on the side that you can earn extra money on. It's just taking the time. You know, people want to come home, turn on the TV or, or just, you know, relax. I get it. Mm. I get it. But you're, you're going to stay at that level and nothing's going to change unless you, you break out of that mold. And, and a lot of times just taking that little step, you know, and, and uh, a lot of times you need encouragement. You need, you need people around you who believe in you. And, mm. um, and, uh, you know, and maybe your, your friends are very, very key. Yeah. It's very key. Absolutely. They influence you yeah. and you influence them as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Cause if, if you're, if you're around people that, that are like, nah, it's not worth it. Don't, don't mm-hmm. do it. You mm-hmm. might not do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's even, um, a movie about boxer with the mic. Cool. The one that did Batman, the Michael the one with, no. Uh, no, the the one with the like the famous Joker. Oh, um, Christopher, Christian Bale. Christian, Christian Bale. Bale. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, He did a movie that he was a, a famous boxer, a, a real story uh, of mm-hmm. Irish background in the USA, mm-hmm. and uh, his brother was an up and coming boxer. Mm-hmm. And uh, because of his problems of of just the addictions and and sp- mm-hmm. uh, spending time with all these 
attics and in in like abandoned houses he was just destroying his little brother's life uh who was he was needing him as as his mentor and trainer sure. and then uh it was really touching like there was a part where the his, the his brother's wife just really confronted him like like what are you doing you're destroying his life like he he just looks up to you and and, and you're just you know being a bum and uh and he he bought a cake and he walked all the way to the abandoned house where all his buddies were or the ex he just gave him the cake and he said okay bye i i gotta help i gotta help my brother good yeah and disconnected from all that and and he changed it and and and, and really helped his brother to succeed and he became a champion good right. you know another thing i when you were saying the story i made made me think about something um mm -hmm. I noticed that um, I want to mention the difference between risk and calculated risk because a lot of your listeners are going to be wanting to start their own business and things of that nature. And a lot of people don't realize the difference, <clears throat> but there's a lot of risk in, in, in a business or starting a business, but you can do it a little more calculated to help your chances. Let me give you a good example. So I, I started uh, in Santa Ana, and then I opened an office in LA. And uh, to open an office in LA uh, without any business, you know, you're paying uh, rent for a building. You got the telephone, electrical. Depends if the water and the gas is included. And then you got to pay the employee, and then you got to advertise, and then you know. So there's a lot of out expenses going out and nothing coming in, and so that risk is is pretty high, and uh, if you don't have clientele, you know, your business won't, won't, you, you'll have to hustle really hard to get that going. Mm. But the difference between risk like that and then calculated risk, uh, this is what really happened. Um, my client in Santa Ana opened a facility in the, in the LA area and he liked the way we did business. So they wanted to know if we would be willing to help them fill orders out there. And mm -hmm. I said, we could possibly do that. And uh, how big and how many people are you going to need? And so it was, it was a nice amount of people that they were going to need. So in my mind, I said, okay, if I get the rent and pay a person, and I already know that I'm going to bring in so many dollars every week, which will offset my expenses. So now my risk is lower and my success rate mm -hmm. is higher. So the calculated risk is is much better because now I have something going in that's going to offset stuff. And so that's the, happens. so that's the difference between risk and calculated risk. And you know what I see a lot happening in California. I don't know if your listeners are all over the world, but uh, there's people starting businesses in these catering trucks, which I think is a great idea. And then they develop a following, whether it's a food truck or whether it's a dessert truck or whether it's, you know, one specific item, uh, seafood, whatever. Uh, what's cool about that is they don't have a building. Yes, they have a truck, but a truck is a lot less than a building. And so once mm -hmm. you develop the clientele, if I want to go open a, a storefront, now I know my chances of succeeding are higher because I already have a following. And if I tell all those people, Hey, mm -hmm. you could also come here to this location and we're open, you know, and so now your chances of succeeding go up. A lot of times people don't think of these things, but uh, just opening a building and expecting people to walk in, that doesn't happen. It doesn't mm -hmm. happen. And you you got to spend a lot of advertising money for that. Uh, but if you yeah. you've already chipped away, and so let, let's say someone starts a business at home and mm -hmm. and they're doing it two hours a day after their normal job. That's a good way to do a calculated risk in terms of starting a business because you're building clientele mm -hmm. and then you go open an office and uh, kind of like what I did. And um, so hopefully that mm -hmm. that helps someone who's listening, uh, you know, do it a little more safer with higher chances of succeeding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I always hear, there was actually someone that asked like, hey, does anybody have a tip of starting a business? Um, I think he said, I live in Thailand, I moved to Thailand, mm -hmm. I quit my, no, 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 okay. 
he, I'm going to move to Thailand. Mm. I'm thinking of quitting my job and I'm just going to save some money and hope for the best. I'm going to start my company. Okay. <laughs> well, he's got yeah. the right attitude. He's going to try. A lot of times the, it's a mental game. You know, you got to convince yourself to move forward. And I think people are too secure with that little weekly check. You know, you get, you get dependent on that check. And, and if you're not uh, willing to take the risk, you, you know, and that's why I'm saying don't leave your day job. Try whatever you want to try on the side or in the evenings and, and see if you got something. But but if you if you just leave, you know, you got bills to pay, you got to rent, you got things like that. It's it's going to be difficult. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a there's actually a, someone that I know. He, he started his, his app mm -hmm. uh, and the. Uh, yeah, he, he had a lot of different ideas before, a website, another type of app. And uh, it, th there were conflicts that happened with his original job that didn't let him do it because actually there was a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. But um, but he kept trying and trying and trying and trying. And, and after, I think, like three or four years of different ideas, he finally has something that's that's worth it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he secured funds, uh, secured uh, even investors, and Good. and and now now he's he's able to do it. He he's he's even now focusing one hundred percent because before he was afraid, but now he even created the business and, mm -hmm. and is now focusing on it after after different tries and and risk, like like you said. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and there's no book on how to do things. You know, a lot of it's trial and error. Uh, mm, people, right. A lot of people don't realize, too, you know, I have a, I belong to a program called the Hispanic 100, and we do mentorship. And I have a mentee who does, um, who does uh, brownies on the side. He likes to bake, you know, and while he's in mm. school, you know, he bakes for friends and birthday parties and stuff. He decided to make it a business. And I told him what he needed to do to make it an official business. It doesn't take a lot. You go to your local city, you pay, you know, under a hundred bucks or maybe around a hundred bucks. Uh, you open a bank account under the business, you put out a fictitious name and then you, uh, you know, you start your business the right way. It's not hard. People don't, people think it's hard, you know, that you need thousands and thousands of dollars. It just depends what you start, you know, but to get a license and to get registered and to have a bank account and, and have it all legit and it's just a matter of your your will and, and your ambition uh it, it's not a lot hmm. Hmm. okay mm -hmm. yeah so it's a uh, so it's your uh calculating risks the people that are around you to mm -hmm. motivate you mm -hmm. and and also trial and error mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah it's, and helping people yeah. along the way yeah helping people yeah, there, there's a. That reminds me of there's um, uh, ikigai, I think is what it's called. It's a Japanese diagram mm -hmm. that um, it's it's. I don't remember exactly all the things that it says, but it says like, uh, if you have something that like you love to do, will earn you money and can help other people, or that people want. Mm -hmm. then you have something good maybe to 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 i want to say lanzarse uh, uh right. to just go go ahead and try your idea yeah. right uh, another thing i want to mention and and i think this is very important and i think people sometimes overlook it uh people will work with you if they trust you and mm. they like you if they like you mm. and they trust you They'll most likely do business with you so you know mm -hmm. so how you convey what you want to offer them or whatever service or whatever product um you know it starts one person at a time and and it's a numbers game mm -hmm. and and you know with more and more people you talk to more and more people will say yes if you only talk to 10 people and out of 10 people one says yes you know that if you talk to 20 people you'll get two people and if you talk to 30 people you get three so it you you gotta in your head say it's not people not liking my product it's just the way it is you know it, it takes so many tries to get a yes and 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 once you understand that and and i also believe that if you believe in your product or your service uh, people can sense that and feel that 
like, hey, I, I got something that could really help you, but you know, you're you're not required to to buy it or, or use it. Um, I'll go to someone else. You know, a lot of times mm -hmm. um, they they know when someone has uh, an authentic uh, presentation and has uh, concerns for them, and that and and that they can help them. And um, I think a lot of times um, people want that. I, I know me when I'm I'm a customer and someone's trying to sell me something or, or offer me something. Uh, I, I like it when they're very sincere and very clear. And and it and if I can't use it right now, I'll tell them, hey, I, I like what you said. And maybe down the road, if I need that item or if I need that service, I'm going to call you. Mm. That's it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because even if you have an amazing product or, or something, you know, that works, if you, you need to be someone that conveys it with a passion. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, even. Yeah, I, uh, it's. I, I've heard people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I've heard people. Uh, you know, take a service just like uh, I don't. I don't even really exactly understand the technology but i like you <laughs> that's true <laughs> well, you're right not, not everyone uh, has the understanding on a particular topic so but they know they know when you're being honest and truthful and, and if you have a good personality it really helps mm -hmm. and if you have an idea and a product and you're you don't have that personality you shouldn't be the person trying to push or sell that product, you should find someone who un, who is good with people, friendly, trustworthy, because uh, not everyone has that personality. So be honest with yourself. If you don't have that ability or, or, or personality, uh, find someone to join your team and, and, and make them part of it and let, let them handle that section and you handle a different section. Because, you know, like I said, we all have different abilities and talents and and many people don't have that 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 front person that makes the contact mm, and, and actually on on that note like what what would you say is a is a good way to be a, a team leader like like once you say like oh you that person's good that person's good for that that phone and then you put them together like what what would be ways that you you could learn or or trained to be a, 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 an effective leader to them like what would you yeah um that happens with me every day uh i meet people and we go to lunch and first you just want to talk i'm not here to sell you anything i don't expect you to buy anything from me i just want to hear your, your thoughts a lot of times uh when you want to hear people's thoughts uh, you're giving them respect. You, you're you're recognizing that they have some understanding or wisdom, and and it mm. and then uh, when you put someone in that situation with the no pressure, a lot of times they'll tell you valuable information that you would normally have to pay for, and then um, and then after if they kind of like what you're saying, just say hey if 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 I had an opportunity for someone like you to be partnered with, uh, would you be open to it? And that's all you do. And then you let it you let it naturally develop from there, and um, and if that's not the person, you do it again with someone else with that same skill set that you're looking for, and 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 just and then eventually you'll get the right match, and then uh, you can move forward. You know, you, it doesn't have to always be the first person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then like managing them later, like yeah, you know, I I'm a firm believer in including. Your, your team on on where you're wanting to go as a business and letting them know the challenges and then letting them know the the, the success stories because when they're involved and and know about those things and they're out there speaking on behalf of the company they feel like it's their company because you've let them in on all the aspects of the business so they're like your biggest mm. you know cheerleader they're going to Go out there and, and, and defend you and protect you and 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 try to Fight. sell your business, yeah, for you. Fight for you, yeah, yeah. yeah like it's um, your ambassadors. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I've heard somewhere that you don't want 
supporters you want you want uh team members yeah or family absolutely absolutely yeah <laughs> yeah and, and and um i saw also because because I, i noticed that you you go to a lot of uh conferences and networking uh events mm -hmm. uh, you, you you give presentations uh mm -hmm. um Yeah, there, there was even one that I saw that you you were the vice president, <laughs> Mike Pence, or, or yep. for for vice president. Uh, yep. You know, um, I'm a firm believer in in knowing what's going on in your industry. Uh, mm. A lot of times, uh, there's conferences, there's things that you can go to, and and why not go? Why not know who, what the leaders are saying? Why not know what the current uh, pulse is in your industry? what the trends are. Now I can go to my mm. clients and talk to them and say, you know, I just came back from this conference and I heard the person who's one of the top experts in this field say this, 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 this. What does your client now think about you? They think you're, you're, you're well equipped. Yeah, you, you're well equipped. You know what's happening. You're not you're not just a, a regular, you know, person out there, uh, you know, pretending. You, you, you really know what's mm. happening. And you know, and basically that benefits them because I, I tell people in California, because California has a lot of regulations, a lot of uh, things against business, that, that if I'm working with you and I'm kind of an extension of your business because you've hired me, uh, I bring in people to work for you. So it's important that I know how the laws are affecting you and I so that we protect both of ourselves and we're both safe going forward and uh i know if my if i was a client of myself i would appreciate that because he's i would say fortino's looking out for me he's he's on top of things i i don't have to worry about this side of my i know businesses have enough things to worry about if, if they can mm -hmm. feel confident in me and and my company that's one less thing they can worry about and they can focus on their business. Mm -hmm. mm, that's a great mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you can, you can even do that when you're starting your business, right? Like, or where you, when you're thinking of starting it, mm -hmm. you can keep, go to, and how do you, how do you find the, like, like that, that conference or that speaker or like, like, what do you usually look out for? Well, there's national conferences. Sometimes there's like a West coast conference. Whatever industry you're in, I'm sure you can go online and, and Google the the uh, the industries or, or conferences for your industry. And then you can't make them all. And, and some of them, if they're close by and all you have to do is drive an hour or two, not even stay the night and come home. I mean, it's it's worth the gas money. It really is. Uh, meeting people, connecting. Uh, a lot of times if you're able to refer people You might have a client that says, I need someone for this. Uh, do you know someone? And, oh, yeah, I happened to talk to someone a week ago at this event. You know, you become a, a valued resource and, and mm -hmm. uh, a, trust, a trusted advisor. And, and that's what you want to be to your clients, a trusted advisor. Huh. Yeah, that's a great point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I can get you that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they're they're always looking for someone to help them with something else. If even if you don't do it, yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> yeah, I've been getting I've been getting a lot of of emails uh, that there's a uh, marketing conferences uh really close to me, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so <laughs> so now I'm, I'm motivated. You know, it it takes time to do these things, but you know, I always use my hands when I talk to my clients. And, and when mm -hmm. something like this comes up, I tell them, look, this separates me from the other guys because I'm out there. I'm trying to find out what's best for you and for mm -hmm. me, you know. And, and so, you know, it. people say that you will retain 70% more of what that person's saying when that person's using it. I'm not saying go crazy and use your hands for every little thing. But when you want to make a point, yeah, use your hands, use your body language, because then the point you're trying to make sticks with that person who's hearing you yeah mm, you, you mean like when you're when you're doing uh, a speaking person yeah when you're when you're speaking one-on-one -on -one with the client or with an individual mm -hmm. you're really trying to stress a point to mm. or when it's in a group setting uh you know uh body language and hand movement is very important 
Mm. They'll, they'll retain up to 70% more what you're saying. And, then, and you and you learned that in going the Just networking events. Sales sales and marketing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because you, yeah, you're right. Because I I'm always looking at like uh, you know I, I'm always learning like like uh, books, you mm. know, tutorials, trainings, and stuff like that. But but yeah, there's I think it's it's a totally different thing if you're there physically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and do you recommend like just speaking to as many people as possible? Yeah, you know, um, I think speaking can get it, it. It really rattles a lot of people, even me sometimes, if I don't know the group or if I'm not familiar with who I'm talking to. But if it's something I'm really confident and passionate about, it almost I don't I almost don't even have to think. You just say it and just start talking, and the right words come out because. You're, I, I tell my staff, look, you guys are recruiters. You guys are experts. People are calling us. You do this every day, eight hours a day, you know? <laughs> so you, you, you know more than 90% of the people out there on this subject. So speak like you know what you're saying. Sound like you know what you're saying. Have that mm -hmm. voice inflection because you, you got to let them know that, hey, I'm an expert. You're not saying I'm an expert, but you're, when you're conveying your words, you're you're conveying that you're an expert because, you know, you do this day in and day out. So, yes, uh, you know, give them advice, tell them what you recommend, you know, and and mm -hmm. a lot of times the clients or the people who are giving them the orders will listen. And it's just a matter of, you know, them understanding that and, and believing it themselves. Mm hmm. Yeah, and, and you, you can open a lot of opportunities just talking with people too, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to talk, you got to communicate, you got to get out there, and you know I enjoy it, and I, and I, and I do a lot of, like you said, I do a lot on the side. I volunteer on a lot of uh, nonprofit boards because I believe in giving back. Uh, people help me along the way, organizations, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I honestly feel I, I'm Latino, and and I I feel there's not enough Latinos involved in organizations like that, and I I think a lot of people don't do it because most of them don't pay you. It's your time, your time, and mm -hmm. uh, if anything, they ask you to give money so that the organization can give more to those who need. And so, um, you know. When I first started doing this, I, I couldn't give much because I was just starting my career, but I could give my time. And then as mm. things progressed and I was able to do better in, in life, and I'm, I'm now able to give time and money. Mm -hmm. mm. So, so you, you, do you do like, uh, like speaking opportunities just, just for, you know, being uh, for free? Uh, or? So the California Staffing Professionals is the conference for our industry in California for staffing. They did ask me to speak on a panel in May. And so I sent my bio yesterday with my photo and stuff, and I will be mm. speaking. So, yeah, I, I don't turn it down. I think uh, I think yeah, I, think I have great. something to say. Right. Well, I think I have some insight on the things. And uh, why not pass it along? I, I don't feel greedy with what I know. I like to give the information out. I think some people say, no, it's for me. I, I, I learned this my, my uh, over my hardships. Like, so I'm not going to let know anyone know. The secrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I <laughs> here you go, buddy. Good luck. There's enough mm -hmm. business out there for all of us. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends who own staffing companies, and we're all friends because we know we might compete against each other, but there's so much business and we'll never touch it all and and we help each other if anything we, we yeah we help each other yeah mm -hmm. yeah no that's a great point and uh, yeah i never really thought about it mm -hmm. yeah yeah because because uh especially people that are always uh giving out uh presentation speaking uh all of them are just sharing over sharing their experience mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you could think like, oh, that that'll affect that person, but in reality, they become uh, an expert, and, mm -hmm. and people come to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 really good that you're you're doing that. Yeah, so, that's what people need. <laughs> yep, yep. Especially today, I think the younger generation needs good role models, 
And, uh, you know, a lot of people, unfortunately, uh, don't want to work as hard as in years past. Uh, I always tell people, you know, you got to you got to put the time in because then you feel good about when you move up because you have put the work in. You've done these different jobs and you can speak with authority and with uh, knowledge because you've been there and you've gone through the, the steps. I think today's generation wants to, like, skip some steps and just get up here and start making the larger money. Uh, the larger money will come. The larger mm -hmm. money will come. You just got to take the time to go through those sequences and you will get there. And like I said, if you're finding yourself not getting there, then it might be a good ch time to change to another company and, and seek another opportunity because there are some companies that sometimes don't recognize that and don't move the person up or, or the opportunities are, are not there and you have to, you know, move somewhere else. Not nothing against the company, nothing against the individual. You know, you have aspirations. I just had someone uh, leave my business who worked for me for ten years, and I'm okay with that. I was that age once. I had those dreams of owning my own home, making more money, blah 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 blah. And and I all I tell my staff is when they come work for me, you know, give me your all. Don't miss work. Do your best, and, and leave the right way which she's leaving the right way. She gave a notice, she gave us two weeks, and we're all happy for her and, and we're going to miss her. But, um, you know, just be up front and, 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 and that's the way I like to operate, up front. You know, nothing's hidden. You know what you're getting from me. Hopefully I know what I'm getting from you. And, and I think that's the best way to do business because you know where everyone stands and then you can move forward and there's no hard feelings. And, and, uh, you know, you just, you know, you encourage them because, um, you know, life is, it's a road and you go down different paths and, mm. and, uh, hopefully they make the right decisions and, and life, you know, blossoms for them. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you, you want people, um, you know, that they can be there and, and are happy and, and also you want the best for them no matter what. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, I wanted to know, like, because uh, I know that you, you're uh, really into like uh, Hispanic, um, like, uh, uh, causes, be, like development, mm -hmm. uh, development. Yeah. Yeah. yeah causes and, and like, uh, you know, how, how, like how how is that how is that going? Like what what do you like what are your goals uh, that you you hope? My goals in that area <laughs> have to do with my family. So I, I as I mentioned, I have kids and I have grandkids now, and I think what drives me is um, in about thirty years uh, the Hispanic population will be the dominant population in America, <laughs> and so. Yes. Why not have an, a say in the development of those leaders in the future on their character, on, on how they think about things and how they approach things? So I think in my mind, the way I rationalize it is I'm, I'm hopefully going to be touching some of those people who will lead America and lead it in the right way and are going to be uh, obviously of Hispanic descent because we're going to need those leaders. And another thing, too, is I want my children and my grandchildren to have the same opportunities I've had. And if, mm -hmm. if, if America changes and continues to change in the wrong way, they're not going to. And uh, it's going to mm -hmm. be very difficult. And so I guess that's my motivating factor. I believe it's going well. I think we're making a lot of impact in the, I should say, in the organizations that I'm involved with. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's a never ending battle you want to keep going out there and, and keep keep pushing forward and, and fighting the good fight you know we I, I believe in god and that's another thing that drives me in very much and i'm not ashamed to say it and i say it all the time and i i, I post a lot on linkedin instagram facebook mm. uh, i have a big family i have a you know, family in Mexico, family in San Diego, L.A., mm -hmm. uh, parts of the United States, parts of the world. And I and I think if I can be a role model to them, it helps me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. 
yeah that's that's a that's a great way to to see it yeah because you you are helping the the future generations yeah mm -hmm. and um and yeah to secure to secure a good future for for them and for everyone yep and the world's changing too quickly we got to do something <laughs> it's crazy right now <laughs> So that's another thing too, you know, I am trying, um, so the California Staffing Professionals is an organization throughout the state. I recently took a position with them as the political action committee chairman. So what I'm trying to do is get other staffing companies to donate money to us so that we can donate to some political races and support people who support businesses, support the staffing industry, because, uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, there's been an exodus out of California. Businesses are uh, leaving, uh, and oh, the population is also leaving. This was the yeah. first year that California didn't grow in population. It went down because people are exiting. Uh, this is a beautiful state. We have a lot of resources. Uh, there's a lot of things to want to stay in California, but when, when regulations and uh, taxes uh, affect businesses so much that they're leaving. It's mm -hmm. not good for the people who stay here because what happens is when those companies are here, they pay taxes to the state, to the county, and to the city. Those monies pay for your roads, your education, uh, all the services we get. So when you have less money for all of those things, those areas suffer, and mm -hmm. you know the roads are going to look worse. The schools, the libraries, you name it, everything's going to going to be affected and uh, we don't want an exodus to happen. We want to make a difference. So back to why I got involved in the political action committee is, you know, we, we can leave like many people and, and, and not, and not stay in, 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 in the fight and, and just choose to leave and go somewhere where, you know, the, the government's doing good decisions. They're not taxing you. They're not regulating you. But I choose to stay and fight, and, and I'm hoping more people choose to stay and fight. And and it's worth fighting for. It's a great state, and um, that's me on my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> ah well, yeah, it's, it's a great it's a great vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. And then the with the Silicon Valley Bank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, there's going to be more banks that's... too. That's what they're saying. So it's it's going to be a difficult year. You know, um, I just had a meeting with my two offices. Uh, we we talk after a quarter has ended and we talk about what happened in that last quarter. And then we talk about the quarter that's coming. And uh, I, I told them that uh, our sales, our billing sales went down about 13 percent from the first quarter of 2022 versus 2023. And there was a famous uh, person from Chapman University that would give economic forecast. His name was James Doty. And he used to talk about how the staffing industry to him was a frontline indicator on how the economy was going to do. Mm -hmm. So since I'm in that industry and I saw the downturn, I'm telling you, and I talked to other businesses, uh, owners in my industry, and they've also seen the downturn. Uh, mm -hmm. The next few months are going to be interesting. They're gonna. It's gonna be a big downturn. And and um, I'm sure you've heard about it, like the how the the dollar is 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 having some some. Uh, it, oh yeah. I don't even know if it's fully. It's losing fully value. Happening. It's because losing value because we're printing too much countries. money. Yeah, that that's true. And, and but like uh, <laughs> that like these countries are saying that they are not they're not going to be using the the dollar like for the like, petrol. Are you hearing. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's like I said, there's a lot of things going on right now. And uh, it, it's it's not just in one area. It's in many areas. That's why I'm saying the economy is going to be struggling in the near future. And it's going to be tough. And I, I already feel bad for the people who are just making it because it's going to get even harder. I think you're going to see more mm -hmm. crime go up because people, they're, you know, they're going to want to feed their family. They're going to want to, um, you know. Take care of themselves. So, yeah, I, I think if, if things don't get turn around quickly, we're going to see a, a lot of crime. 
Yeah. And what what do you think is would be a good uh, a good plan for that for people? Well, I don't think this administration is making decisions to help. So I think the first thing is is changing this administration, and the elections not till twenty twenty four. We're in twenty twenty three, so we got about a year and a half <clears throat> before the election. But I think. I think the people are fed up. I really do. And I think they're feeling it in the pocket. And when you affect mm -hmm. people's pocket, they notice things and they start paying attention. I think that's happening now. I don't, I don't like what's going on in the schools uh, with the uh, mm -hmm. the way they're uh, bringing in, you know, these people. Yeah. And it's, it's not it's good. And I think people are upset it. about that. And I, I, I would try to make change in Washington as quickly as possible, make changes in my state capital, which is Sacramento, which I'm trying to do. Uh, I would advise other people in other states to do the same, in other countries to do the same in their uh, provinces or, or regions. Uh, I've traveled around the world, so uh, I think people around the world are feeling the same way. Uh, mm -hmm. They're not happy with their existing governments and where they're heading, And uh, but it's going to take the people to get involved. I think. For too long, we've sat back and said, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. And uh, it's not going to be okay if pe good people just sit on their derrieres and do nothing. We got to get up and we got to get involved. And you don't have to get involved at a high level. Just get involved in your neighborhood, in your city, you know. And, and, and take, take a, like make an effort. Yeah, just make an effort in that little area. And that makes, if if everyone does that, it's like a it's like a tidal wave. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. 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 And, and um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, yeah, because I, I was gonna ask uh, how you remind. Like, I I have um, a brother that just uh, graduated in college, university, mm -hmm. and uh, he he's in he's in the like three D animation. Mm -hmm. Uh. Out, I would love to refer him to you. He, Absolutely. He's in, in Florida. I don't, I don't know if, if I can ask like, questions. I mean, I don't never know. Uh, <laughs> you know, when when someone uh, is is coming out of college, I always I, I talk to a lot of college kids because through our mentor program and then people who come into our office, and I think a lot of people who get out of college uh, are so focused on getting out of college that they never take time to do like an internship or volunteer uh, with a company that has that kind of technology within their business. Mm. I think it's time well spent. If you volunteer, regardless if they pay you, I think you should volunteer for, for a month or two or three. What happens is when you get in there, whether it's a paid internship or a volunteer internship, the people in there get to know you and get to understand how you operate they understand your personality. And let's say your internship ends. Usually, this is what I've seen. If an opening occurs, they're going to call the person that they know who already has been there a month or two and offer them the job. So it's I, I think you have to you have to put some time out there. Just like I put time out there volunteering or going to conferences. As a student, you got to go out there and volunteer. And, and or, or, or try to get a paid internship if you can. But those are hard and far and few between. Um, so that's why I'm saying if you have to volunteer, volunteer um, and, and see how that goes. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe like find find something to volunteer mm -hmm. to start. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. Yeah, like maybe. Yeah, yeah. Like like uh something that'll that'll open up opportunities indirectly absolutely mm -hmm. i mean what's it called uh i was gonna ask you um like uh is there is there anywhere that like like i, I noticed this notice that you said that you're gonna be speaking uh mm -hmm. is there anywhere that like uh, how can can people listen to you? If, uh, is, is it maybe going to be broadcasted? That's a good question. I don't know if they're going to do that. Uh, I know they do record some sessions, and I will ask, and maybe that's something we need to do as an organization. 
Um, mm -hmm. We uh, we're learning uh, that that organization is growing and going through a metamorphosis right now. They're changing a lot. A lot of the people that have been doing the job of doing it, doing it 10, 15, 20 years, they're trying to bring in a younger group of people to take over. And so that mm. could be a great suggestion. I mean, that's, that would be interesting. We could probably get uh, more attendance like that by telecasting some of it. And that way next year, more people want to be there physically. Yeah, because all, all it takes is a laptop, really, yep. and, and, and a camera. Because, um, yeah, I, I know a lot of people that would love to hear you, you speak uh, on there. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, and uh, what's it called? Yeah, well, well, uh, thank you so much for 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 uh, being here with me and 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 giving us such uh, insight. I, I think it's invaluable, and I I learn a lot. I mm -hmm. for sure I learned a lot, <laughs> and uh, I think I think this is gonna help a lot of people. Excellent, uh, especially my my little brother. I'm a dolly, <laughs> so, so you need to hear. <laughs> need to hear what Fortino said, and um, and yeah, like uh, for people that that want to follow follow what you're doing, like like uh, you'd say like like through LinkedIn. I'm gonna put all all the links on on the description of this video, but like LinkedIn or what, what would you say? Facebook you would be the best. Instagram. I I think LinkedIn is probably where I put a lot of the professional stuff, and uh, mm -hmm. Facebook as well. Um, but. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, I just encourage everyone to follow your dreams and, and you know, not be satisfied and, and always try to learn. I think uh, when you stop learning, you stop growing. And, um, you know, it's a big world out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And and also to, to plug in your, your, your company, staffingsolutions.us. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, there's two locations, Montebello and Santa Ana. Correct. I always want to call it Montebello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like there's there's one one city um, that that when I heard it the first time, I was like, what? Like like, oh yeah, I, I live in Cerritos. I'm like, what, where C Cerritos? Like, can, can you can you can you show me where it, where it's spelled like? It's Cerritos. Oh, Cerritos. Cerritos. <laughs> it's like Cerritos. <laughs> They don't know. They don't know. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it's so like uh, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna put all the the links in the description. And and is there anything that you like to to say uh, to to the the listeners and, and viewers out there? Yeah, I think what I just said was probably the most important. No, never stop learning ask questions. There's no dumb questions. Um, you know, uh, I think, I think you just got to retain things and, and just keep in mind that, you know, we're, we're all learning. Uh, I'm still learning, you know, you, you just got to, you know, be the, be the student still, you know, be the student still learning. And, uh, but at the same time, you know, if there's someone smaller, younger, starting off, you know, teach them right, give them good pointers. The world needs good people. The world needs, uh, you know, you, you, if you have little brothers, little little uh, nieces, nephews, you know, teach them the right things, you know, be, be an example and, and answer questions from sit down, give them time. I think time is real. I think everyone's busy. Everyone's on the phone, you know, give people time, yeah. give them eye contact, you know, uh, break some bread with them and, and just sit down and, and, and you would be amazed at how much you can learn from people. If you say, Hey, can, can I take you to lunch? And I just like to pick your brain and, you know, I'm not going to sell you anything. I just want to know more about what you do, and and, and they'll be willing to to give of their time. Mm. Mm. So, so it's a good way to to learn yeah. and, and to absolutely to get uh, values and motivation and a mentor. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. Now we'll, I know. No, we we all want you to be our mentor. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> now oh, yeah. now we'll, we'll we'll. We can all we can all follow you and you got it. Man. Uh, it was a pleasure. And, um, you did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> good luck with your podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be sharing it in the to call them. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna keep doing it. Yeah. To maybe maybe later also you you'll see you'll see someone that that can that can also inspire uh, from from the ones coming. And I, I, I really enjoyed it. Good.
<laughs> now, thank you so much for Tino. You got it. Take uh, care, buddy. Have a great one. Uh, you too. Bye. Thank you.